Hello, genealogists. This is Craig, and this is Just Genealogy. And I often get the question, how much should I charge? And I guess the Judy Russell answer is the best answer in the world. It depends. It really depends on where you are in the continuum of your professional life. It depends on how well you are recognized by others as the go-to person. And, but more importantly, it depends on how much do you need? And what I mean by that is, by how much you need, I mean, you should be figuring out, you shouldn't be doing this half something. In other words, if you're going to become a professional genealogist and you want to make a living at genealogy, then there's some things that you, some metrics you have to recognize. And you have to be able to demonstrate to people that you're the right person for their work to be done and that your fee is actually worth it. So what I did very early on is I decided, well, 2080 is a full-time equivalent. I used to be a manpower analyst for a while, short period of time. So I know about manpower and I know about resources. It was a Navy thing. So 2080 is basically 40 hours a week times 52 weeks. So 40 hours times 52 weeks is 2080. So if I charged a dollar an hour, I if I worked full time, 40 hours a week for 52 weeks, I would make $2,080. I don't think you can live off $2,080. So the issue becomes, how much money do you need in order to live? And I don't mean frugally, but I don't mean that you're going to get rich. And don't forget, I'm talking about 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. So I think that if you were to do that, and you charge $25 an hour, and this is, I'm, you'll have to bear with me, $25 an hour is... $52,000 a year. Is that enough? Now that assumes that you are making, you have 40 hours of work every week. I don't know about you, but although I do have 40 hours of work every week, it's not client work. And I doubt seriously that unless you're doing repatriation work and it's the right time of year, you also have 40 hours a week. Or unless you're a big name in genealogy, I doubt seriously that you have 40 hours a week. So to get to that $52,000 a year, I have to charge more than $25 an hour. So I like to believe that I, in fact, only work half the time. It's not true. But my expectation is, is that only half the time will I actually have clients. And this is back when I had clients. So therefore, half the time means twice $25. That means I'm going to charge $50 an hour in order to get to $52,000. See how this works? So I take well, how much money I need. So for me, it's, let's just say $52,000. It may be $75,000. It may be $100,000, depending on where you are. But I think $52,000 is a nice number. I could live very comfortably on $52,000 a year if my house was paid for. Only another month and it will be. So if you want to craft things so that you can get to that dollar value that you need so that you aren't constantly scrambling for work so it doesn't upset you when somebody comes to you and then they decide not to take you. Uh, personally, I charge $75 an hour, which for me probably is on the low side. I'm probably able to charge 100 based on how much I know. but And I may do that at some point in the future, but eh, I, don't, I have other things to do other than client research. One of them is to talk to you. But say you wanted to, but say you needed $75,000 a year. Well, you would break out your calculator and you would take that 75,000 and you would divide 2080 into it. 
And that would be how much you would need to charge an hour if you had a 40 hour week and recognizing you have only a 20 hour week, you might want to double that. But maybe you have a 30 hour week. So maybe you want to take, you know, one and a half times that. I'm just saying that you have to know how much you need. In other words, you need to budget your personal life in such a way to know how much your professional life needs to contribute to putting a roof over your head and putting food on your table in order to make it all work. Now, there are people who charge $10 an hour, but they don't live off of it. There are people who charge $25 an hour, but they don't live off of it either unless they have the full 40 hours a week. Now, there are some people who are able to charge $25 an hour and have a full 40 hour a week. If you had a full 40 hour week, I think $35 is a reasonable figure for a, a middle of the line continuum researcher with some experience, knows what they're doing in a specific repository, that kind of thing. Uh, but if you don't have that 30 hour a week, then $35 an hour probably isn't going to work for you. Then we have the issue of, do you have a minimum fee? Well, a half an hour is my minimum fee. So $35 is my minimum fee. I generally don't charge for 15 minutes, a 15 minute consultation. And I try to keep everything to 15 minutes. So I don't have to charge. But if it goes longer than that, or I have an arrangement to where I'm doing something more than that, then it's half an hour. Sometimes I may charge $40 for a half an hour, but $75 for a full hour, just because of the administrative overhead associated with doing all those things. So I do have a minimum fee. It's $35 or $40 an hour. Now, th that fee is for people doing genealogical research. My fee for lawyers is different because they're charging $400 an hour I or $500 an hour or $600 an hour. My fee's $100 an hour. Now, do I get much lawyer work? No. But generally, if you're going to have to appear in court, you're going to have to do forensic genealogy, and you're going to have to do, you're going to have to dress up in a suit, then it's more expensive. It, again, it depends on what you're doing, how you're going to charge, and who you're actually working with. I also have a family rate for people I really like, whether they're part of my family or not. Or I also sometimes will use the family rate, which is a little bit less when it's a project that I'm really interested in knowing the answer to myself. And those are the best kind of projects, actually. So you also want to ask the question of, do I charge for a report time? And the answer to that is absolutely. But I am a research as you go kind of person. So actually, the amount of time I spend on report time is more of a review editing situation than it is a creating the report situation. So because you are in fact creating the report as you go, that's your hourly. Do you charge for analysis time? Of course you do. That's what they're paying you for. Unless you're just doing record searches that, that, and I, even when I do a record search, I do an analysis because I want to advise my client about what came before this, what came after this, and what other, what other research tasks they could they should do as they relate to this record, largely because I want them to be a return customer. And return customers are a good thing. So you do definitely want to charge for analysis time. And remember that part of your analysis is providing information about future research, is providing information about future research based on your analysis of that record that you're, I mean, if it's just a single record grab. Now, a lot of times I'm able to boilerplate that because I pulled that same kind of record for years and years. An example would be my, the account, an account from the settled accounts of 6 April, 1838, the lost pension finding aid that I created. I made a small fortune off of in the day uh, going and just pulling those records uh, because I could get a cart full of them at a time and, and do 20 at one time. Very economical. 
especially since the report was also straightforward and didn't require much analysis because it was only a single record. Then you have to, I, I think one of the most important things too is you have to be able to assess your client when you talk to them for the first time. You have to make a decision. Do I actually want to work for this person or with this person or do I not? Is this person going to be more trouble than they're worth? Well, worth is a function of your hourly. In other words, if you find that you have a customer that you think is going to be problematic for you, in my mind, you should charge them more in order to put up with their problems. If you're going to bother me all the time, it's going to cost you more. If you're going to let me do my thing, provide you with a report, and then we take it from there, it will probably cost you less than if you interrupt my day every day, providing me with stuff and more questions and more, you know, beyond the initial question. So that deals with how I charge. But then there's another issue of how do I deal with my downtime? In other words, what do I do when I don't have a client? I think it's important as a professional to work those 40 hours a week, those not 52 weeks, but I mean, because you have to have educational opportunities like IGHR, like SLIG, like GRIP and other places and conferences like NGS or regional conferences like NERC or Ohio or Southern California, all places that you want to do in order to better yourself. But you will have downtime where you don't have work to do. Well, I have 43 book projects. Usually in the old days when I was visiting repositories, when I got to a repository, I would work. And if I was done with the client work and I'd only been there a short period of time, you know, generally less time than it took me to travel there kind of thing, I would start a project there, especially if it was a repository I went to frequently. And out of it could come an article, which would make me look better. Out of it could come a book. Out of it would come something that I would pass on to somebody else to work on. Or... I would get a sufficient idea about additional record sets in that repository that I knew nothing about before. And that's what I would sometimes do at NARA, where I would I would have like a couple hours of work to do in NARA, but it took me hours to get there. So I would work on other projects. And some of those have been books now, and some of them are still in their infancy after 35 years. Downtime is non-billable time, but not non-productive time. In other words, you always want to be productive. You always want to figure out how to get those 40 hours in. Now, should you volunteer? Absolutely. I volunteer right up to the point where I start complaining about volunteering for somebody. And then I begin to examine backing away from volunteering for that group or reducing the amount of time that I volunteer for that group because all of a sudden I internally I'm complaining about it. As long as I'm having fun, I love volunteering. When I stop having fun, I don't love volunteering. And I think that's my criteria is that as long as I'm happy volunteering, I'm there to volunteer. And volunteer can be part of the 40 as non-billable, but still productive time because you're networking, you're doing other things. So those are some of the things that I deal with in regards to considering how I charge and what I do with my time. If you have any questions, put them in below. You know, I really can't tell you how much to charge, except you need to charge as much as you need to charge in order to make a living doing genealogy. But by the way, that's not $1,000 an hour, nor is it 500 Although I do know people who charge $250 an hour, I just don't happen to be one of them. Although I charge that much for a lecture, sometimes more, just because it takes so many hours to put a lecture together. So recognize that putting lectures together is also part of your productive time, but it's non-billable. That's why reuse is so important in what you're working with. And we can talk about reuse another day. So this has been Craig. This has been Just Genealogy. If you're charging $10, $15, $20, $25 dollars an hour, you probably should re-examine your situation because you're not charging enough. The auto mechanic makes more than that probably. The guy who fixes your car, you're a professional. 
Don't let people treat you as something other than that. And again, subscribe. Tell your friends. What's the worst thing that can happen? Be safe.